How's it going everybody? So in this video, I want to talk about why the term adaptogen is not a really good term to use in regards to a lot of these herbs that people consider adaptogenic herbs. So one of the easiest examples of a so-called adaptogenic herb is not really adaptogenic in the sense that most people use that term for, is ashwagandha. So ashwagandha, it doesn't matter what form ashwagandha is found in, whether it is the uh, raw root powder, KSM 66 extract, the Shodan extract, or the, uh, what was the other one? Sensorol, the Sensorol extract. Almost every single version of ashwagandha tends to cause negative symptoms or side effects, or really just negative effects, and certain individuals, okay? The term adaptogen is supposed to be an herb that helps each individual's body adapt to stress or adapt to whatever environmental circumstances their body is placed under. And so essentially the herb is supposed to work with the body to improve its functioning for the circumstances given and, and, and adapt with the individual. So I can tell you, first of all, and, and there's many herbs that we're going to cover in this video, but ashwagandha is an easy one because it has been more and more talked about and discussed in the last two years or so about so many people um, just having tremendously negative side effects from ashwagandha some people taking it for a number of months after initially having negative side effects and then experiencing pretty extreme uh, uh, outcomes as a result. So one of the, so the main negative side effect from ashwagandha is obviously the tendency to increase uh, lethargy and feelings of apathy and just like people just don't care. They, they lose their productivity. Some people go into an existential depression when they take ashwagandha. For me, it definitely makes me feel extremely apathetic and lazy. I lose interest in pretty much everything that I'm doing. And also, I start to notice a pretty dramatic increase in aches and pains in my body. Um, and also, I start to develop hyperthyroid symptoms where my heart starts to uh, heart rate start, heart rate starts to increase dramatically. Like the first couple of days, maybe the first week, my sleep dramatically improves, my stress levels go down. But as time goes on, it actually has a reverse effect where I start to feel more and more anxious. Eventually, it feels like my brain is eating itself. And so there's a lot of people that actually have uh, documented test results before and after ashwagandha where they actually – notice a dramatic increase in uh, their thyroid hormones and their blood work, which is pretty bad. And uh, I've seen a couple of people who had previous uh, thyroid issues, actually, who were taking ashwagandha for a number of weeks, and they developed a hyperthyroid crisis. I think that's the proper term for it, where they almost die, basically. And then, of course, when they remove the ashwagandha, their symptoms go back to baseline, their thyroid levels go back to baseline, and their symptoms and negative impact goes away, negative effects go away. So I know a lot of people that had anxiety before that insist ashwagandha is life-changing. So I'm not saying ashwagandha is bad. What I'm saying is it isn't a, a freaking adaptogenic herb the way that people claim, okay? And honestly, the, the big overarching th uh, thing in this video is that most, pretty much no herb that we're going to talk about, like no herb that people think is an adaptogen actually works in an adaptogenic fashion the way it was originally coined. So the next one on the list is rhodiola. Rhodiola is one I've been taking pretty consistently almost this entire year. Uh, there are many different extracts, extracts of rhodiola and they all do different things. Uh, so we're talking about rhodiola rosea specifically, and we'll just talk about the basic 3% rosavin, 1% solidroside extract, okay? Um, and so rhodiola, 
you know, for one, even if you take just a regular whole herb kind of powder or the the regular, the, just a plain root, same as with ashwagandha, it doesn't matter the form you take it in, it still doesn't have uniform, like just general adaptogenic benefits for everybody, okay? So with rhodiola, this is the interesting thing. Uh, for most people, it can increase energy, it can increase mental well-being and cognition. That's definitely been my experience, but most people who take it over the long term, what they notice is the first week, maybe the first month, when they first start taking it, has very profound increases in, in their energy and in your well-being and your mood and your ability to handle stress. But over time, it's almost like you barely notice it and its benefits fade in the background. I think rhodiola seems to be the closest thing to adaptogen as we, as we have because it doesn't seem to necessarily lose its effects. Although a lot of people insist that what we're talking about here is you develop a tolerance over time and it doesn't really even kind of affect you after a while. But what could be happening is that when you first take it, it has such a profound impact or benefit because your body's dysregulated at baseline and that significant benefit you feel at first, noticeable effects, is your body just like really sorting itself out. And then after a while, the reason you don't notice is because it, it's really just balanced your body out over time. Now, the thing you have to understand, though, is that rhodiola does not work this way for everyone. And also, the dose makes a poison. Uh, rhodiola is generally seen as most effective in smaller doses, and the more you take, the more its effects change. For some people, it doesn't matter what dose they take. Uh, rhodiola can actually put a lot of people directly to sleep, okay? Probably due to its uh, impact on beta endorphin release. Um, for some people, they take a low dose for a while, and it just seems to boost their energy, or maybe they don't notice it at all. But then after a while, that low dose starts to make them feel sleepy and lethargic. Some people, rhodiola, for whatever reason, just makes them feel sleepy and lethargic, okay? So I actually notice when I take the, the, the just like the plain root, it actually uh, makes me feel sleepy, if anything, and that's about it. So I don't know if that's supposed to be the adaptogenic qualities at play. But to me, it just seemed like a pretty effective kind of cortisol-reducing, sleep-inducing, relaxing herb, right? No more adaptogenic than something like maybe, I don't know, skull cap or lemon balm, right? Uh, however, you know, obviously something that relaxes you and, re and reduces your stress that much to induce sleep every time can definitely improve energy levels and have all these effects that adaptions claim to have over time just by the nature of improving, improving sleep quality. Um, but it's just important to kind of throw out there that like it's, these herbs have me mechanisms of action and these mechanisms are not always like just clear cut and dry helps you adapt to stress. It's good for your adrenal fatigue, your HPA access and whatever else, especially when we're talking about like ashwagandha rhodiola though. Some people actually notice they feel extremely edgy and anxious when they take rhodiola, and it works like a stimulant for whatever reason. And the thing is, to have kind of like um, unpleasant effects, especially if you take it in low doses over a long term and those effects are still there or they get worse, to me that doesn't seem like it's helping the body adapt to stress. To me it's more like it just has effects that the herb has, and those effects may not actually be something you want to experience. And so, therefore, it's not this adaptogenic type of herb that everyone thinks it is, right? Okay, let's talk about another herb a lot of people insist is adaptogenic. Let's talk about Panax Red Ginseng. So, Panax Red Ginseng, I made a number of videos about, or I mentioned here and there. Basically, a lot of people insist Panax Red Ginseng is this, like panacea, that just cures all ail elements and like boosts the immune system, increases your body's ability to adapt to stress. It's an adaptogen. Uh, it can also increase your energy levels, improve weight loss, and all these other things. It's just universally good, beneficial, and adaptogenic. 
Well, unfortunately, pan extra ginseng uh, has very specific uses for very specific types of people. For me, I've actually been taking pan ginseng pretty consistently for a number of months this year. And I've noticed if when I like taking it, it makes my, it heats my body up and increases the speed of my mind and everything. When I take pan extra ginseng, especially in the so-called effective doses, which, you know, there's no such thing as one dose for everyone. Like the first day I took it, I took a teaspoon of raw powder boiled, boiled and mixed in a coffee. And I mean, I remember just an hour later sitting in my history class sweating my mind was racing i went my mind went from 200 miles per hour to a thousand miles per hour and i remember just i couldn't concentrate in my class i was sweating horribly i was twitching felt overly anxious and didn't even know what my thoughts were saying because they were going so fast i don't i felt like i was on some crazy stimulant drug it was horrible but not on a like stimulant level but more so just it it felt like it was just increasing my physical ability my, my body's physical processes just sped up is what it felt like now the so you know there's a lot of things people say oh don't mix it with caffeine whatever look um panic surgeon is not an adaptogen okay usually in traditional medicine where it's been used for thousands of years as part of a system of healing it's prescribed for weak Fragile individuals, usually elderly individuals who are frail and, and need to improve their nourishment, or people who are eating a nutrient deficient diet due to poverty, or they're overcoming a severe illness, or overcoming, you know, overtraining syndrome, and usually people who are living in a colder climate, or during colder seasons of the year, or people who are experiencing kind of like slow development of the mind, or, or whatever. It is not meant for people who are just trying to adapt to stress or they have already very stressful lifestyles, that very fast lifestyles, and they're trying to improve their body's resilience to stress. That's not it at all. It's very specific. Usually it, it's used to strengthen weak individuals who are slow and malnourished or, or what have you. They have a really poor, weak, pale constit, cons, con, constitution. Uh, however, then you have herbs like, um, American ginseng. So American ginseng is a ginseng, just like Panax ginseng, only it's kind of like a sister ginseng in a way. American ginseng has all the same kind of benefits that are commonly associated with, with, with Panax ginseng. It, you know, increasing your immunity, uh, increasing your energy levels, your body's ability to handle stress and, and sharpness of the mind, all of these things. However, the energetic qualities associated with American ginseng are the complete opposite of Panax. So Panax is very heating and yang and speeding up and, and aggressive and whatnot. American ginseng is more relaxing, it's more yin, it's more cooling, it's more, it's more moisturizing compared to Panax ginseng being more heating and, and drying okay when you when when you take when i take american ginseng i feel more calm i feel a little bit more at peace my sleep dramatically improves i'm uh life feels slower and more concentrated and it seems to balance me out because not because it's an adaptogen but because my con con con, con constitution is already very fast, very speedy, very hot, very yang. So it's a medicinal, energetic compatibility type of thing. It's not like, oh, these herbs are universally good for everyone. They're adaptogenic. They help the body adapt to stress, period. The, the word adaptogen, as far as I know, was coined in the 1900s. It's a relatively recent um, uh, terminology being used. Whereas tonic herbs and, and, and the energetic systems of Chinese medicine has been used for thousands of years, I think looking at all herbs in regards to what are their overall energetic qualities, what and what 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 do they generally kind of do for most people, what are the experiences most people have with them, and what am I trying to achieve personally? 
And then look, trying to use these herbs to kind of enhance the qualities that we're looking for and making sure they're in alignment with our energetics, right? So they don't cause side effects. So the point is adaptogenic herbs, no matter which one we're talking about, there's not even Siberian ginseng, also known as Yolithro, not really adaptogenic. It, you know, I'm actually took a teaspoon of it. You know, that's been my recent kind of, uh, sh shin bad or whatever, my recent routine or whatever. And it tends to make me a bit jittery, makes me really hungry and makes me a bit drying. It's all, it, it does actually remind, it's like, it does feel like a, a more milder version of panic ginseng. Panic ginseng, I'm like, whoa! Siberian ginseng, I'm like, uh, I'm like, it, it's trending in that direction, but it's not as bad. American ginseng is definitely more of a calming, sinking thing. So, so yeah. Um, if you look at the scientific literature, you'll see in general, these herbs seem to impact stress and, uh, you know, they, uh, they, they impact homeostasis, they impact immunity, but they're not all universally like, Hey, you know, you healthy, active, super aggressive, you know, 18 year old who is a professional athlete. You can take pen X red ginseng and expect the same, you know, balancing effects that this frail 70 year old, you know, malnourished man who's recovering from the flu, you know, you're going to, you're both going to experience the same kind of balancing qualities, even though we're at opposite ends of the spectrum. No, that's, that's, it's just not, it's a fantasy. That's what adaptogens are kind of, you know, thought of doing. They don't do that at all. It's actually more so, Hey, you have a certain energetic quality that your body's currently in and you need an herb that helps to balance that out and fill your deficits, you know, and that person does too, but they have completely different energetics and deficits than you have, and they need a different herbal routine and probably a different diet as well. So anyway, that's kind of the myth of adaptogens, I guess. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Do you disagree with me? And if you do, let me know the points you disagree with and give me some supporting links or evidence. You know, tell me what I got wrong, and I'll talk to you all next time.